So I'm just going to do a little introduction for everyone. Um, some of you knew that this is the Awakening Village and it's a free membership that includes these live uh, um, gatherings every week and Inspire show once a month, the third Wednesday of the month. Most of you are familiar with this, that this is the Awakening uh, Village Cafe, our weekly gathering. And each, each month we do the Inspire show on the third Thursday of the month. But a lot of you probably aren't aware that I have uh, all sorts of recordings, and I'm going to use have this recording also on something I call the Soul Sanctuary. It's li a library of resources, uh, videos, uh, posts, uh, different types of uh, templates, that type of thing that'll help you with your, your soul's mission to uh, inspire you to, to live more and more authentically, but also to do work that really inspires you and helps you um, generate income at the same time, if that's something you want to do. And then the network uh, includes really all of us here online, but also people on the Facebook group and beyond. So there's different ways and different events for us to connect and to cross-promote the work that we do. And um, just as um, I'm going to just skip through here this for a second, I do work that is really helping you to define your, um, your path, your soul's mission. And I offer it in like a self-study group private or even a, a retreat. I'm doing a, various retreats over the year. In particular, the next one coming up is in June at the Omega. So if you're interested and you've never been to Omega, it would be an awesome, awesome opportunity for you. And uh, also I have a new program called the Change Leader Mentorship, which is for people who already are running a business or are leaders in an organization and want to get to the next level. And it combines business strategy with self-development uh, and um, intuitive work. Okay, so Today, I want to talk about something um, that um, I experienced when I was in Costa Rica. It was a very, very deep connection to nature. And this profound part of nature, this tree, helped me to, to realize that I needed to go deeper in nature and in my own nature and connect more and bring that more into work that I do. And then when I came home and I did some Google search, I found this, what is what I want to talk about today, which is this book. And it was like perfectly aligned with exactly what I felt I needed to get my um, practice and my teaching to another level. And uh, this book is, um, it can work for many people, not just people like me who are helping people on their path, but also for um, you know, if you're a practitioner help working with children, if you're like Heather, a shaman, shaman practitioner, it helps you understand the different stages that people are in. Uh, as a writer and writing coach like Julie, uh, help you to understand where different people are and how they may be expressing their creativity and their soul's creativity at different levels. So this is a really a, a very interesting framework for all sorts of different practitioners. And uh, so what I want to do is just talk about the, some of the key components of it. And I've outlined it, it here. So I'm going to take each one here, like the overview of what it is, uh, the, the four directions, what it's based on, and, and so forth. Okay? So the overview really is this idea, and I've taken this directly from his book. So uh, pardon me if I've uh, plagiarized a bit, but it's, I think he says it a lot better than I could say it. And I uh, obviously have reference all through this uh, document. So he says that the... Um, the more mature our human society it, we want it to be, the more it requires us as individuals to be mature. And he's talking about our soul's maturity, not just, you know, the kind of traditional thing, you're so immature, you know. And uh, he says nature, including our own deep nature, not just nature out there, has always provided us um, with a template for the human maturation process. And that um, every human... Hold on a second... Um, so the, the idea is that every human being has our own unique and mystical relationship with, with nature. And it's through this discovery and cultivation that we really grow, you know, become, go from childhood through to adolescence, adulthood, and elderhood. And it's really that our current society, um, we think sometimes about this development as more of a hard work. The harder we work, the more we get, um, you know, acclamations of the kind of work that we do, the more mature we are. But that's really not necessarily his premise. This premise is more that true adulthood is rooted in the idea of kind of, um, he calls it transpersonal experience. So uh, in a mystic affirmation nature, experience our own sacred calling, and then embodying that in our own soul-infused work. 
that is the process that he's talking about. And uh, I can still see somebody in the background and I can't seem to... Can you guys just check your muting again, if you don't mind? I think uh, it could be uh, Maria Del Carmen, because I can hear cutting. <laughs> so if you don't mind, if you could try to mute. Yeah, just touch the screen in the bottom left corner. It should be a mute button. You see a microphone. Thanks, guys. Okay, now I can't hear you, so that's good. Uh, so the other thing is, he talks about the wheel of life. That's what I want to talk about. And he calls it both eco, environmental, nature-centric, and also soul-centric rather than egocentric, which is kind of the, the premise and the, and the framework that we're working on right now. So this is, uh, what I want to do is I want to break down this for you. So he has eight stages, and um, it works around kind of the cardinal, the four cardinal directions. And in each stage, there's something called a stage name. There's a task and developmental task that we have to go through as part of that stage of life. And there's a gift that we have at, when we're in that stage for all of humanity, for our community, for our family that we offer and each one of that stage. And then we have like kind of a center of gravity, in other words, something that we are uh, focused on that's a really prominent in that stage that we focus. And then we have a sphere of influence, the, and it grows as we get older and, and we mature along from very self-centered to more cosmic-centered. So you'll see that this... Uh, framework works on many, many different levels. So the first is I'm going to talk about the inner circle <laughs> and what he, how he's looked at that. So the, the directions, he calls them the four cardinal directions, or they are called the four cardinal directions, and they are divided into the, um, you know, going from clockwise east all the way to north and then back to east again. And so they are, the idea is that the east is about spring, renewal, summer is much more about flowering and the fall is see is reaping the seeds and then north is kind of um, closure and uh, well I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what each one is and how it relates to our development of our soul and then it also you can look at it as the times of day you know the morning the noon the e afternoon and, and evening but it's all this the kind of how nature has a cycle. We also have a, a cycle in our soul, in our soul development. Okay, so when he talks about East, for example, this is, the, this is kind of the way, the basics of what he's trying to explain. So if you look at the East Hemisphere, the whole East Hemisphere, he, you have both childhood and elderhood. I'm going to show you back this stage. So look on the right-hand side, all of these you've got. Uh, Zena, can you mute? Do you mind? Um, you can see all the stages of childhood and elderhood. And so what is the East uh, is the idea of being versus the left-hand side, which is adolescence and adulthood, is all about doing. And so this, why is this important is to understand that we naturally are in a very much of a state of being in early childhood. We're, we're like kind of one with nature. We're, we're, you know, we don't feel like we have to construct or do anything or accomplish anything. We're just in being. And at the end of our life, we're very much the same way. And it's to honor where we're at. And, and you know, a lot of kind of current uh, spiritual practice say we should be being, we should be being, not doing. But doing is an important stage of life as well. And that's the adolescent and adult stage where we're, we're reaching, we're accomplishing, we're challenging, and we're producing. And we're, we should put there, we're learning as well. So we're doing. Um, so when, there, when you look at that globe, it's, it's two spheres, the east and west the childhood and, uh, and elderhood on the east, and the west is adolescence and adulthood. But he also divides it by uh, north and south. And so the south hemisphere is childhood and adolescence. So I'm going to show you it again. So you can, it's basically slicing it instead of up and down to two halves, uh, slicing it um, up or east and west, up and down, north, like this way. And so when you look at the north, you can see that there's all of adulthood and elderhood, and the South is all childhood and adolescence. So it's just like different slices, different ways of looking at these stages. So in the South, um, the first half of life, it's all about the individual, our needs, our personal development, what our potential is, uh, and it's focused on riping the individual. But on the North side, which is more our adulthood and our elderhood, it's much more of the collective. And so it's more emphasis on the needs of our community, the potential of, uh, of, the, of the community, and per, 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 
particular around our personal growth and our focus on serving the whole. So that helps us to understand a little bit about us and where we're at. If we are in the adult stage or elderhood, we tend to be um, in the north, so we're moving much more into collective and understanding how what we've been doing, what we've been acquiring, learning our life will help the collective. And as we are moving into maybe elderhood, as, as we're you know moving towards um, a later stage in our life, and it's not it's not time based on time or chronology. It's more on the development of our soul and, and the different tasks that we come through, that we move in from a doing to a being. And you might be feeling some of these things naturally. You may be have felt somewhere in your 40s, and again, I'm just making the number up, but a movement towards more of how do I serve more? How do I bring my expertise and all the training to serve? That's moving more into the north hemisphere. And then as you move from there into, I can't do all this and, you know, just keep being so, so active all the time and reaching and, and striving. I don't want to do that anymore. You might be a sense that you're moving into, yeah, there are doors is saying, yes, you're moving into elderhood. And elderhood is the east, uh, well, it's the whole eastern hemisphere, but the first stage of elderhood is in the northeast hemisphere. Um, so kind of gives you a little bit of an idea there. I'm going to just stop for a second just to uh, see if anyone has any questions. Let me just stop the recording. Stop the recording. All right, so we were, yeah, we were talking about the, the four directions. So here he, all, he not only talks about the four directions, but then putting the four stages, the main sh stages of childhood, adolescent, adult, adulthood, and elderhood. And what I found really interesting about this is that when I was typing it, and Heather, you'll know this, there's no such word as elderhood. I kept getting like the red line under it. And I thought, isn't that, doesn't that say so much about our society? that there's actually not a word called elderhood. <laughs> Even though there's childhood and, and adulthood, there's no elderhood. And that's a really important, um, you know, and that's something that, that uh, Julie teaches us. Our words are, are very much tied to our culture and our beliefs and so forth. And when we don't have a, a word for something, it means we don't put a lot of value on it. And that's something that's really important about this model is how important elderhood is. And for our survival, for us passing on the wisdom, I mean, so much. So I thought that was really interesting. So the other thing he talks about is um, the uh, transitions from the different main stages of, of childhood, adolescence. So we know, obviously, birth is the stage into childhood. We know that puberty is the stage into adolescence. And we know the end, end stage at the very end of elderhood is death. But there's two other stages that he talks about that we don't necessarily hear about very much. Um, and it's the first one is called soul initiation. And that's going from adolescence to adulthood. So, you know, people like, um, you know, Zena, Doris, and me, uh, who have children that are kind of crowning at that, st moving into that stage, it's important to understand what is that. And that's the shift from social, the, the adolescence is very much about social belonging want to belong to the crowd, right? And into your soul discovery and embodiment of your soul in our community. So that's where you become the apprentice. You start to learn the, your, your trades, become what you're meant to be. But there's a step in there. It's an, it's, it's a, it's initiation into it that we have to really recognize and moving out of the adolescent stage into the adulthood. And then there's another stage that's not and of course, if we don't even recognize elderhood, there's not the stage of moving or transition moving into elderhood is not really recognized. And he calls it crowning. And it, he kind of takes it from the term cro like crone. And uh, in some um, more personal development uh, books and stuff like that, you'll, you'll hear the cro like the crone is the, the wise woman who comes of age as an elder. And so there's that very positive connotation of, of a woman, a wise woman who passes on her wisdom. So he called it crowning because he wanted to incorporate men and women. And he also thought it's a very regal stage. It's like the stage where we are crowned, you know, of our, we, all of our learning and expertise, we're now crowned an elder, 
which is so different than put out to pasture as an elder, which is our society right now. So we relinquish a lot of our conscious attachments of, um, of our individual and we turn more to that more expansive domain of the soul and what he calls more than human community. So we go, go beyond humanness and even our community to all that is and all of nature and beyond that. So those are like the four main transitions. Well, there's actually five, birth, puberty, soul initiation, crowning, and then death. Uh, but then in between that, there's also, he calls quadrant transitions, which are very interesting as well. And I will just go through them very quickly. But so in between early childhood and late childhood, he calls it the naming stage or, or transition, where you go from this being of being, seeing everything as one, you know, as a child that you don't really distinguish me and my mother, I'm one with my mother, to uh, awareness of the ego. And we start to name things. We actually get a name. Sometimes that's where we get our nickname from. And it's, we we're actually creating awareness of self at that point. And it happens usually around three or four. It doesn't, it's not always the same with everyone. But there's a real consciousness shift that happens. And we go from being very innocent to then exploring the world. And sometimes we, you know, we have things that happen at that time, the terrible twos or whatever we see. And so there's other stages in between um, early childhood, early adolescence and late adolescence. And that's he calls confirming. That's where you often have like sweet 16 birthday parties or uh, bar mitzvahs, those kind of things where you're kind of coming of age, but you're still an adolescent in that, that stage of life. And then uh, the induction is when you go from um, the early adulthood to the late adulthood is where you've completed your apprenticeship. You've really acquired a lot of the, the learning. You're not learning as much. You're more applying that learning in later adult, adulthood. And then the going from late, from early eldership, elderhood to late elderhood is what he calls surrender. And that's where we really, really, truly relinquish our striving and our attachments. And we are just very much be. He calls that stage the, um, I think it's something like the elder in the cave or something like that. So we go and we meditate in the cave for the rest of our life or whatever. So just uh, some ideas there. So the other thing he talks about is that they have stage names. So I'm going to go back to this. If you look at each of the stages, starting again, always uh, clockwise from stage one, early childhood, he names it the innocent in the nest or the innocence, or the ex and then the next one is explorer in the garden or shortens it to be the explorer, or the, the thespian of the oasis is the uh, early adolescence and the wanderer of the, in the cocoon, the apprentice at the well, wellspring, or for many of us, the artisan in the wild orchard and the master in the grove of elders, and finally the sage in the mountain cave. That's what I was looking for. Those are all names, and he names them based on um, explaining that quadrant and the opportunities for us in that stage. And they all relate to natural environments. And also, each one is like from, you know, garden all the way out to a much broader perspective of the oasis and then back into the cave again. So it, it, his name kind of mirrors the psycho-spiritual qualities that happen at each one of those stages. So that's another layer of dimension that he puts in here. Another one is, um, I'm going to just talk you through this very quickly, and then we'll take a moment here. So when he talks about uh, stages and quadrants, archetypes. So that sounds a little bit confusing. But if you come back to when I was talking about naming, if you look from the right Again, uh, clockwise, innocent, explorer, thespian, wanderer, apprentice. He narrows it down to that's the quadrant archetype. You are primarily focused on, as a, as a newborn and as a very young child, being innocent and just observing around. And as you get into being four, five, six, seven, eight, you're more the explorer. And then uh, in early adolescence, you're more of the somebody that's learning, you know, the thespian. And then you're want, at late adolescence, you're wandering out. So those, those archetypes represent the really what it is you are doing in each one of the stages. Um, so like um, the artisan, which we might be right now, moving into the master. The master is more at the elder stage, and the sage is the final. He also talks about... Um, the um, overall, uh, what does he call it? Um, 
Yeah, sorry, that was the stage archetype that I was just talking about, innocent, explorer, thespian. But he also talks about the quadrant, so the north, south, east, west, having an archetype. And uh, it kind of looks weird because you have in the, the east the fool, and the south the orphan, and the, the west the visionary, and the north the warrior men, uh, martyr. And I won't go into a lot of details, but if you really think about it, you think about an innocent child or or a they have very much similarity to a very older person and a fool not in a negative way but in a fun loving open-hearted in being just that type of kind of archetype whereas in the childhood stage um, later childhood and early adolescence he calls the orphan because we're moving away even though we're not orphaned <laughs> per se we have families we in that stage we're moving further and further and further away from our families and and in, into a larger community and it's those that process is really important in both of those stages and then the next is a visionary of our visioning where we want to go and how we want to create our life and then the, the warrior martyrs and we're really embodying that that work and helping others so that kind of gives you an idea of the four areas of the the the, what he calls the quadrant archetype, and then each of the stage has an archetype as well. Okay, so I'm going to stop here again and just see if there's any questions. So, like I mentioned before, each stage has a gift for society, for our communities. So the idea, for example, of an innocent child is that, you know, that luminous presence, he calls it. So you just, you know, just being around a child, how you feel the beauty, the innocence, the grace of it. And being around a, a little bit older child, the wonder, and they come to you with the frogs and everything like that. And then the uh, young adolescents, the fire, you know, and, and so forth. So it's, it's like each of us, as we go through our different stages, we have something to offer beyond are who we are and everything. There's some core element of, of what it is that we have to offer um, society. And I think that was a really cool thing. Then the other that's really probably one of the most important aspects here is the developmental task. So in order to move from one stage to another, really the idea is that you are to, um, over, to overcome, I guess is the best word, but to, to complete a task, a developmental, personal soul developmental task. And um, and so we, sometimes we don't complete it 100%, but um, the idea is that we can always go back and complete it sometime. But it's really about, you know, first, the first stage going from the innocent to the, um, the explorer is the ego formation. We actually are forming the ego at that stage. And uh, it's a really important thing. We think about ego as a bad thing, but it's the thing that helps us understand that we're separate from uh, others. And then um, another stage, a task is uh, creating a secure and authentic self and then manifesting innovative delivery systems for our soul work. That's the, the late elderhood. That's what we're doing right now is creating that. And once we get finished that task, then we move to the next one. That's the graduation. That's the stage is, is going through the task and fulfilling it and moving on. But like he says, it's not always, always completely filled and that we can work on it at later stages. But it's really that that task is the central focus of that stage of our life. And then the other thing he talks about is the fears of influence. So first is the center of gravity. And this is identifying um, the hub of our personal life at that stage. So early childhood and late elderhood is very much about spirit. We're in, if you look at a, ch a very young child, they're actually kind of very much in, still in spirit. They're not completely grounded as an individual, and if, they're, if their ego hasn't developed, it makes sense. Similar if you look at an older person, and maybe I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just throwing this out, as we see dementia and that type of thing, it's possible that, that that ego is letting go and we're becoming one back with spirit again. Early adolescence, for example, the center of gravity and the focus is very much about peer groups, sex, and society. And so, you know, think about all the things we do to, uh, in our society to, um, to suppress that. And yet, that's an important aspect of the center of gravity, uh, the, the sphere of influence of, um, of early adolescence. And then late adulthood is about giveaways as an art form. This is that idea that we're looking at how we can take our work and serve our community. 
and how we can do this in a very structured, I don't know if structure is the right way, in a way that uh, lays the foundation for us to do it in an easy, easy way. So the other side he calls is circles of identity, sphere of empathy. So the idea here is that a uh, proportion of the animate world that we are actively embracing as an essential part of our existence. So it's the idea that we start out as um, very self-centered, oriented, self-centric as, as a baby, and then we move into more social-centric, our family, and then outward ethnocentric into our communities, then more of a worldview, and then eco-view, and then more of a holistic eco-view, and then into a cosmo-view. And so it's like our center of how we feel. And you can see people who are kind of stuck in certain ones. I see people who um, can't see beyond me and myself and our nation. And you can see what, where they're stuck in, uh, that more ethnocentric view. You know, America, um, Trump whereas a more world global view still may only hold a view of humans and and the and the animal population is not included in that and then as we go into more um, looking at the all the ecosystems and really valuing that and seeing the importance of that and then beyond even our planet into the cosmos and that's the idea of how we expand our sphere as we mature so I'm not going to go through all the stages right now. Uh, I can go through these at another time with you. But basically, he goes through each one of them and all the dimensions that I mentioned, from the naming, the task, the development task, the gift, the sphere of gravity, the archetypes. He goes through each one of those. So I just want to just go can contrast it. What he says is more of our current eco egocentric model, where we start off at birth. And, and our training is much more about obedience or entitlement. It can be one of the two or both. You know, always giving. This is entitlement, you know, and rewards versus obedience. You must follow. Um, and then moving into primary social economic training where, the, where that's very much our school system is in that, right? And, um, and then more towards conforming and rebelling and this, this struggle we have with teenagers and, and so on all the way through to, like, we look at... Um, retirement instead of you know elderhood withdrawal from society as opposed to helping collectively helping society and we have actually a very different way of working through from uh, birth to uh, these are the transition points parent liberation where we start to allow child a little bit more he calls it riot and then exodus and then soul suppression and then promotion retirement withdrawal so these are things that we can look at in a little bit more detail, but it's a very different type of model that we are currently working in than more of a, a soul-centric one. Oh, I just wanted to mention before I, I finish this recording is that our next, um, our next week is we're actually going to be doing uh, the Inspire Show. That's the third Wednesday of the week of the month, and I'm going to be interviewing my friend and many of your friends, Corey Robertson, who's local. Um, she's a beautiful soul who helps executives and, and teams, but she, right now she's over in uh, Saudi Arabia, and she's working on a mission to help um, evolve the, the, the community and transform culture there by teaching coaching approach. And so she's going to talk about this groundbreaking work that she's doing uh, next week on Wednesday. So stay tuned.